Hello and welcome back to Civilization Beyond Earth. We are playing with the Rising Tide expansion and we're going through a tutorial. So last time we actually started a colony and right now it looks like it has two more hexes. So what it typically does, and I probably didn't explain this in the last video, is when you settle a colony it will have one, it'll gain one tile when you create it. And then roughly every I don't know, every turn or two it will gain an additional tile until it gains what's that gonna be six tiles so it'll have a full seven tiles and then it will become a city and then you can start building stuff there and all that kind of stuff so it does help if you have a trade route which should we start a trade route yet so if you want to look to see how the trade routes work it's this little mysterious plus sign down here for additional information so let's go ahead and take a look here. So there's all kinds of information throughout here. So let's go ahead and look at the trade route overview. So we do have a trade route going from Central to Axiom, which is going to be our capital to our outpost. It's going to auto-renew. We're going to get to more on this in a minute. So what the game will do is it will default to auto-renewing your trade routes. So once you set them up, it'll just keep on going there until you either go to war, it gets pillaged, or something like that. However, with an outpost, it actually will end because when it becomes a city, it will stop auto renewing. So we'll actually play with that a little bit later. So it looks like that increases our outpost growth rate by 50%. And I pretty much always try to do that to try to grow my outposts quickly as possible so it becomes a city so it can start producing stuff basically, start building buildings. And then we'll see how we're going to work that in just a few minutes. See what else are we doing here. So we have a lot of aliens surrounding our capital. They are non-aggressive, so they are pac pacifists, basically. Well, not really. They're just waiting for us to initiate something. Right now, they're thinking, "Oh, they're nice. They give us food. Uh, let's let's lick their hands and stuff." So that's that's kind of where they're at. Which has thrown a little monkey wrench into our business is that we have. Who is this over here? Who are you? Okay, so you, you can see here you can actually click on the city to bring them up. So you can see who they are. So you can see this is PAC. This is a Pan-Asian Cooperative. So they built their city next to us. It looks like they're starting to build a colony, so they're pretty close to us. And this is going to be the Chung Su. You know, they're not really upset with us, which is surprising. So what I may do is pull back our units and actually start working on clearing out these aliens because they're going to get annoying. We're not going harmony. We're not going to be pacifists. You can do that, but eventually you will go to war. And when you do go to war, if you haven't been fighting anything, your, your soldiers are basically are going to be weaker. They're not going to be as tough. You know, and the, and the AI will actually start to insult you and say, oh, your army may be big, but they're not very experienced and yada, yada, yada. However, my major concern with basically initiate, initiating war with the aliens is going to be our explorers. If our explorers run the aliens, chances are they will not survive, especially when they are out in the water. So we would like to have protection sent with them, say, one of our patrol boats. But then we're really leaving ourselves open. However, as you can see here... He does have, you know, a fair amount of respect. Three out of nine. His fear of us is probably what's going to keep him in check. And right now, if he drops to a sanction status, we may have to abort our war with the aliens. And it's more like hunting rather than war. And then we might have to go back and actually try to respect his offensive capabilities towards Axiom as much as possible. And also, we could, you know, if he takes it over, we could always take it back. You know, normal difficulty... You're not looking at anything that's too crazy, you know, like it's not going to work. Okay, let's see here. Where are we at? For, where are we at for our diplomatic capital? We're at 271. Can we actually purchase anything? We can. So we could purchase additional buildings. What were we thinking with the military? We could increase our military production. Well, you know, I was thinking about the science deal, wasn't I? Where are we at with our virtues? There we go. So it looks like as soon as we gain our next level, we could actually pick up the earn 100% of alien lifeforms base strength 
as science after killing it. And then we could also earn 90 science from destroying alien nests. Very cool. How close are we? We are quite a ways out. Let's see, that's going to be 89 turns. We're getting four per turn. So what's that going to be? What is that going to be? That's going to be like 20 turns. Do we want to wait 20 turns to start doing stuff? You know, I don't think we probably do. So we will uh, go ahead and get things rolling, I think. Okay, so we did hit next turn. We're going to start moving back. We could leave one guy back. I, you know, I don't even know if that's worth it. Maybe we'll just leave our patrol boat back here. I think that may be the way to go. How many turns do you have left? So you can click on there, you can see... Well, it's not going to even show me. Maybe we didn't even start. Okay, let's go ahead and end our turn. Let's see if anything happens. Okay, yeah, so we haven't even started yet. We're going to start. It's going to take eight turns. And we're going to start moving back, avoiding the miasma as much as possible. So now the question is, do we want to have our soldiers start within the city and start basically radiating out from it? Or do we want to come from a one particular direction and kind of work, you know, kind of fight our way in? You know, I think either would probably be appropriate. We're going to have him do the little peekaboo maneuver. I think we're probably good. We'll not worry about that too much. Okay, so we have a quest opportunity. Plus one production from trade depots, or plus two energy from trade depots. You know, I think we might go with the energy, just because our energy seems like it's a bit low. And our production, I think, is pretty decent. Normally I go always for production. But I think on this map that we have, I think uh, that might be a better move. Typically, I always try to go production. And I was thinking about this, how I, how I value the different resources. I typically think I want to get production first. I want to get energy second. And then I would like to get science. Is that right? Production, energy, science. Yep, that's right. And then I would say probably culture... And then health, which is also, you know, the equivalent of happiness. However, when you start to get really low in your health, sometimes I'll prioritize it on a, I don't know, I'd make it more important, basically. See, where could you go to get us going? You know, I could have you go back here. They typically don't attack the city too strongly. We just picked up a ranger inside town. So we're getting pretty close. Where well, we let loose the dogs of war, basically. So what we're going to have to do. Let's see. What can we do? Do we want to start it now? Or do we want to wait one turn? I think we'll wait one turn. So go ahead and start another production. Uh, do we need to build anything else to get us going? You know, we may build a gunboat. Just get one going. Another worker would probably be good as well, but I think we can wait on that. I think you are just going to go ahead and camp right out in front here. We're going to put you on alert. You are going to chill out for one turn, so you're going to do nothing, and then we're going to go, and then we're going to attack. So from our expedition, we completed one. We gain a free level in an affinity, which is pretty cool. And we got a pristine artifact. Very nice. Okay, so you have one expedition module left. Where can we send you? You know, maybe we'll send you down here. If they get upset, they may come and attack us. But I think since we went down there, I don't remember seeing any aliens. Which is going to be important when we start start the mayhem. Okay, so here, here we're going to go. So when we use our city strike ability, which is going to be, what's it called here? Aliens detected near central. You know, so you can go ahead and attack with your city. So if we use that, we're not actually going to get experience for any of our soldiers by doing that. So I'm not going to use that unless I have to. If I was being sieged by another player, you know, and I was looking kind of bad, or, you know, I, I would definitely use it. 
There's no doubt about it. I would definitely take that into consideration using that. Here, I don't think it's really going to matter. What if I move you forward? What would happen? So these guys could actually take out them entirely. Now, if you look down at the bottom, if I take my mouse off it, you're not going to see it. But down at the bottom, it says Decisive Victory. Both those bars that you can see flashing are their health bars. So it's going to have the approximate damage inflicted, your strength, and then your bonus versus, you know, like, it's, you can have flanking on there. So we did pick up a virtue that gave us a plus 25% bonus damage versus aliens. So you can see here, our soldier looks like he should kill this alien manacore, and we should only take maybe two bars of health, so that's not very much. If we had our ranger just shoot him, our ranger's not going to take any damage because he's shooting, but he's also not getting anywhere near close to killing him. So what we can do is we can have him go in here, and he should be able to take him out. Yeah, he does. Good job. So you can see there, we started out looking with him, we went and moved there, so we're going to move here, and then I think we're going to go ahead and move you up, because right where he was at, he didn't have the range to shoot that far. So you can see here, you can actually go down and click ranged attack, and you can see all these different tiles that you can shoot to. So we can't shoot to this tile, and we can't shoot to that tile for some reason. Well, it, it makes sense, because we have these three hills are right here. So right there, that's flatland, that's flatland, but he's up on a hill, so we can shoot there because we can essentially see around this hill. So take that, take that into consideration when you're going to be shooting at people as, you know, hills are going to block your view, mountains are going to block your view, that type of thing. So, I you know, that's one way to make an attack is just say, hey, hit your ranged attack and then do that. Or, and I had just hit escape to get out of that, you can go on there and you can just hover over it and you can see, oh, we're going to do roughly 40% of its health and damage, and you can just right-click, which is a little bit quicker. So you see there we did some damage. He is out of movement. He can go ahead and shoot. We're not going to be able to kill him with one shot. What would our city bombard do? Our city bombard would actually completely destroy it, but I don't think we want to do that. So we're just going to go ahead and shoot him with our ranger that's in the city. So he is not quite wiped out yet, but we should be able to wipe him out next turn. So from there, let's see here, we can pick up our free affinity level. And I believe I said we were going to go purity because we have float stone opportunities. So let's go purity. How much joy can this new planet hold? I can tell you how much joy it holds. It's in my fist as I crush my enemies and hear the lamentation of the women before me. No, not really. But you have to say something, right? Okay, so now I should uh, probably go back and talk about this for a second. So when you actually go up in the affinity levels, so right now we're level 1 purity, you will get this upgrade available. So let's click on that. It brings up this unit upgrade select unit. So from here we can see all the different units that are in the game. You can see the ones that we currently have access to. And then you can here see all the melee, broken down but the ranged, our naval, so we have three naval opportunities and that's what they look like. Hover, ones that have hover ability, and I think most of these, let's see, that's a hybrid, that's a hybrid, that's a high level purity, that's a you know, mid-level purity, that's gonna be a supremacy, and the throne, I'm not sure what the throne is, maybe that, maybe that's a a hybrid as well. I'd have to double check. And then we have our air, which is only going to be basically your interceptors, your tack jets. But if we click on available, we'll see these two are available for upgrades. So we'll go ahead and click on one of them. And as you move along, once we get to six purity, we can actually pick another ability. Once we get to 11, we can pick another one. If we get six of purity and say six of something else, or six of, you know, which, whichever one, so as long as you have two, you can end up getting an upgrade. So from here, we just get our basic upgrade to a tier 1 soldier. We can choose between plus 15% when attacking or plus 5 hit points heal when not embarked. And embarked's going to be when you're out in the water, basically. So we're going to go ahead and go with the attacking. With our patrol boat, we're going to do the same thing. 
So we can go plus 20% against naval melee units, or we can go plus 20% against naval ranged units. So I typically like to, you know, be concerned more about the naval melee units. I believe that the aliens, you know, they're primarily in the water. They're going to be uh, melee units, and I think this bonus actually will apply against them. We'll, we'll double check that because I, I guess I'm not 100% sure, but also melee units can tend to knock you down faster as the, the AI will tend to have a, a big group of those when they go after you. So I like that option, so we're going to go ahead and accept that. And we are good to go with that, and then we're going to go ahead and hit our next turn. Yep, so they charge right into us, and they basically don't survive. You know, they ran, they ran into the bullets. Okay, so we can start moving forward. And go ahead and start making attacks on these guys. It's looking pretty good. Now we could have taken him out. Okay, this is another important uh, thing here. So it says veterans, veterancy gain. So we want to click on that. Or when you get to that unit, it'll come up. But it says down here, pick a bonus. So we can instantly recover 50 hit points or... We can pick up Discipline and get a, gain a permanent plus 10% strength and range strength in combat. So pretty much you're always going to want to take your additional bonus to strength and range strength in combat. However, there may be times where you want somebody to say gain hit points so they can continue fighting, so they can hold the line. And you know, like you're always hearing in the movie, hold the line. So that's that type of thing. So we're going to go ahead and select that. And then also we're going to send him into combat. <coughs> Excuse me. Had to sneeze. Sometimes you just got to. Okay. So we're going to just continue shooting. Let's see. Could we actually... We could bombard and completely wipe them out, which I don't want to do. Because that would be a waste of XP. So we're just going to go ahead and shoot them. Weaken them a bit. And again, if we really need to clear people out fast, we would be a little bit more concerned. So you, he runs into the issue of where I could have him go into the miasma. I think I'm going to, just so I can get him up into the fight faster. Also, I can tell that our colony is now a city because our trade convoy shows up in our, our unit queue, basically. Okay. So now what we want to do is we want to go to Establish Trade Route. Do we have any quests for any trade routes? I don't believe that is one. No. I wish this would still uh, let you scroll within the window. It's one of my... For your eyes only. No, that's for search computing. What's this one do? Build three soldier units. Okay, we don't want that. Strength and Decay, Biopsy Alien Remains, okay. So we don't have any of that, so what we want to do is basically find a good spot where we want to trade. So it's going to show our cities first, you can do trade routes with it within your own civilization, and basically they are going to give you production and food, that's the only two things that you're really going to get. You can also trade with stations, which is going to be the city-states, and they will give you a variety of things. You can also trade with other civilizations. And you can see here, since we have more money and we have better... No, I guess we don't necessarily have that... Our science isn't that big a differential. But you can see that if we trade it with, with Jiang Sang here, they would get 9 energy, we would get 3 energy. Which basically means we have a better economy than them at central. Now with Tiang Gong... You can see that it's you know it's not quite as big of a divide where it's plus three energy and plus six. However, we probably don't want to trade with them when they're going to be getting that big of a bonus, and it'd probably be an advantage against us. I guess that would be a disadvantage, wouldn't it? Okay, so what we can do is we can either trade with Axiom or we can trade with Adept Blue. You know, I do like the plus two science. The extra food would be nice. However, getting your next your colony, when it starts to become a city, which is right now, 
you want to make sure that they have the opportunity to build up as fast as possible early. So what we want to do is we want to select Axiom, but what we also want to do is we don't want this to auto-renew. We want to keep our options open. Again, if you want to play fast, if you're playing you know, the easier difficulties and you really don't care about the trade routes, you know, leave this on. And I'm not going to tell you that it's going to make the biggest difference in the world, but to me, I want to be able to have more control. So what I'm going to do is trade with Axiom for now. Okay, so you need to keep on moving. That's all right. Okay, so now we need to select a production for our new colony, which is Axiom. And I am getting kind of worried about our Explorer. So there are a couple things that we can actually buy in Axiom. So you can see here we have our list of units, we have our list of buildings. But if we actually go and select the city and go into our purchase, so you can see here what we can actually buy. So you can't actually buy a trade depot. Everything else is available. All the units are available. We can even buy a trade convoy, but we don't we can't actually use it yet because you need a trade depot to do that. So yeah, we can't buy anything with our diplomatic capital. We don't have enough money. So what we are going to do is we're going to take note that at 390 energy, we can buy a recycler. So remember that, 390. When our energy hits 390, we're buying a recycler. But for right now, we are going to build this old earth relic, I believe. Let's see, how many turns is it going to take to hit 390? Is that going to be like six or seven turns, something like that? I'm sure we could get the exact math. So I think it's worth probably waiting. Or wait, no, actually, we're not going to do the old earth relic. We're going to do the trade depot. We want to get the trades going right away. I'm sorry about that. And that does make sense. We are going to forego our border growth because our border growth is not growing into anything, you know, very exciting. We want to build our production as much as possible. The trade depot is going to give us one production, one energy. Well, I, pardon me, it's going to be one production, two energy, two capital, and it allows us to do the trade convoy, and we'll see what we're going to do with that. So I think we're good there. Let's go ahead and end our turn. Are you deaf to the cries of the dying as you condemn them with destruction? So we got a bug lover. We got a bug lover. Doesn't surprise me. So they're going to start to lose respect for us because of our bug killing ways. However, they are going to be scared of our military. So it kind of evens out. Okay, so you're going to go ahead and move up first. You will move up as well. Let's see here. You could take probably take a shot. What do I want to do? What's going to happen if you go forward? You will be able to kill them regardless. Let's soften these guys up. Soften up the wolf beetles. Okay, so now where do we want to have you go? I really want to get you up into the fight, so let's go ahead and move you forward. And then you're going to go ahead and move into the miasma, I think. It'll be okay. You'll survive. We'll send you forward. Even though they're pretty weak, they've taken some damage. They still are a brutal force to be reckoned with. Okay, so this drone is concerning me, but we have the explorer in between us, so we are safe. Go ahead and end our turn. And you know, one thing that I did not do is you know how I love the micromanaging. I have not started the micromanage. Wow, looks like he took a good beating. Look at that. It's a tough guy. They're on the verge. Okay, so our explorer's going to get down to that excavation site. Let's take a look at Axiom real quick before we get into our combat for this turn. So this is interesting. This is very interesting. So Axiom, by default, is actually working this tile that gives us one food, one production, one energy, and one culture. So it gives us four resources, but only one of each. If we actually changed over to all food, well, geez, it's not really going to grow any faster, is it? Oh, yeah, well... That's interesting. It's, it's not going to grow any faster, and that's because we do have some food coming to them via our trade route. So that's something to take note of. 
So we're actually able to gain some extra resources because of our trade route taking advantage of trading within our empire, if you will. Okay, so our Arc Ranger can go ahead and shoot on these wolf beetles again. Weaken them to some degree. So this guy's pretty much hurting. He did pick up another opportunity where he can try to pick up some more discipline. So now the question is, do you do that? If I heal him, he would survive being attacked by both of them. If I, however, went with the extra strength, you know, it's not going to help his hit points at all. He's going to be kind of left in this position. But what I can do is I can go ahead and take it because it's, I want to take that. It's, you know, we paid for the extra experience. We might as well be getting it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move him back and then move him up in his place. And something else I could have done is actually just click them from where they were and they will actually just swap places like that. But I didn't do that. I don't know why. Okay, let's just go ahead and weaken this guy. So when you actually weaken them, they will do reduced damage. So sometimes it's a good idea to weaken them. And I'm expecting both of them to charge into our soldier. Let's go ahead and see. I bet they both do it. So yeah, sometimes it's better to weaken rather than to try to kill. And that, we went, we went to kill the wolf beetle anyways. We would have injured it to some degree. So yeah, then now they both attacked. They were both weakened, and I think that worked out. Okay, let's go ahead and get our explorer doing their expedition. See, now our ranger picked up discipline. He's now seasoned. We're going to have him go in here and shoot right away. And then he will do the same. So that is an alien nest right there. So now there's a couple of different things you can do when you want to heal. So I can stay right here and heal. Normally you're going to heal, I believe, 10 hit points per turn. And it's not going to take effect immediately. If you are, in with, if you are within your own friendly territory, within range of one of your cities... You, I think you will heal an extra 5, so that will be 15. However, if you go inside your city and heal, we should heal 30. Let's see, we're going to go ahead and make you seasoned as well. And I think we'll have you sit tight and heal. Let's go down and take a look at our explorer. So he is still alive, which is good. We get a message if, message if he died, but I just kind of like to make sure he's doing okay. That drone must have flew off. Oh, now it's back. So you can see there that Pack is very impressed with our science. I wonder why it doesn't keep that up there when they're impressed with us. When they're not impressed with us, they get a little, you know, a little hand sign over there that they want to smack you. Okay, so Axiom, we now have food going on that tile. You know, we might as well work this other, this other water tile since we're out here. We'll go with another farm. Let's see, you are now seasoned. Very nice. We'll have you move up. What do you see? Nothing. We'll have our ranger move up. Sees nothing. We're going to go ahead and go up there. Check out their nest. So you can see here, no one actually did really any, did any healing. But here we're going to see in just a second. Let's see, we picked up some preliminary research on a distant technology called artificial intelligence. Okay, so we've managed to finish that. I'm going to jump in the water. Let's see here. You can actually pillage, which we want to do. If, say, you wanted to actually farm XP and you didn't mind the aliens, like this is, the aliens are not going to be very tough on this map for the most part. You can actually step off of it and just wait for them to spawn and then keep on attacking them. And you could essentially farm the nest if you want, or farm the barbarian camp, is what they would probably call it in Civ 5. However, we get 90 science if we go and pillage it. And I think, wait a second, we don't yet. We don't, do we? Let's go take a look at our, was it virtues? So once we get one more virtue, we could actually go and pick up the scavenging, which would give us the 90 science per alien nest destroyed. And right now, see, we are 58 points shy of getting a new virtue. 
six salients per turn. So what's that going to be? Roughly ten turns, maybe nine if we gain some bonus. So, you know, we might just leave that. We could stay on there, but we might as well step off, start healing. You heal. You, I guess, can just fortify. Gives you a little bit of a defensive bonus. And I think we'll just do that. And you'll see what I mean. We'll see if we get anything to spawn. So he's saying many people, yes, but also many problems. But he's gaining respect because he likes our total population that we have. So that's that's pretty good. Let's see. And they're telling us you we should pick up some things. Okay, so we actually went above our 390 because I wasn't paying attention. Maybe we didn't go over by that much. And we might have missed it by a turn. So we're going to go ahead and pick up the Recycler, which you can see here. So it's going to take us seven turns to build the Trade Depot. So if we go in here and purchase our Recycler, what is it, what is it now? Five turns. So we picked up two turns from buying that building. Of course, it does drop our energy down, but now their production is going to be way up. They're going to be able to build buildings faster. You know, we're going to be able to grow faster because of that and build military units faster. We also did pick up a population in this city here. How big a difference will this make? So you can actually click, so we can look up here and see that we have six turns until a new new citizen is born. Let's see what happens if we click over here. Seven turns. Let's see our trade depot is going to be five turns. It's going to be five turns regardless. So you know, maybe we'll stay on the food for now. How many turns is it going to take you to finish building a farm? Eight turns. Well, let's let's stick with working this tile for the food. I think that'll work out fine. Okay, so you can go ahead, fortify, and we can move on. Okay, now I'm worried about the Slavic Explorer stepping on there and taking our nest that we have fought for. So we're going to go ahead and move on top of it. See, we built another soldier. We're going to go ahead. We're going to hit our M key, and then we're just going to say, hey, go down there. And then we're not going to babysit you. You're just going to do your thing. We pick out a new research item here. So we've gone with chemistry. Then I believe we went physics. Then we went ecology. Then we went genetics. Now we're going to go with engineer. It's going to be very quick to do with 13 turns. It will also finish up what I consider to be the the five essential technologies that you want to make sure every civilization has. And again, some players may have a style that does not include one of those. I always tend to pick up all of those. So we're going to go ahead and pick up engineering that will give us a combat rover, which is an armored unit, a thorium reactor, which will give us energy, and then a repair facility, which would allow us to build land units at an increased base and reveals titanium which is uh, pretty useful I believe for most of you know it's probably useful for everybody I can't think of anybody that it's not useful for off off the top so you're gonna sit on the nest even though it's kinda silly but I wanna make sure that he doesn't get it that would upset me greatly there would be a great anger in my belly if he did such things okay so we're basically just killing time as we're waiting for our culture to build up we probably could send these two guys off and do a little bit of exploring although I would not recommend the ranger being your primary explorer maybe we'll send our marine off and send another ranger down here probably should have did that earlier so we're going to go ahead and send you, yeah, we'll send you right there. When they team up, they're going to go do some exploring and also protect our expedition, our explorer. So he picked up 80 production, which is going to quick build our gunboat, which is pretty cool. So our explorer is now out of expedition modules. So we need to get him back to a city. So what we're going to do is go ahead and maybe just get you to that point. Our gunboat is up. 
we're gonna have our gunboat come out here check things out and we'll start building some more stuff we can also go back and look at our diplomatic capital and see where we are at see if there's anything cool that we can build so now we have a couple choices we can go with the cyto nursery which would give us some science and some health and we can see here we are in dire need of health we're at three I guess you call that na three negative health negative three with our health I'm so used to saying three unhappiness but that's not what it is so we would probably want to let's go ahead and do the cyto nursery the pharma lab's gonna be better for health overall but I want to pick up some extra science as well so now Axiom can actually build something and what we're gonna do is we're basically gonna go back and follow what we were doing in Central we're gonna go ahead and start off with the old earth relic and that will allow us to grow our city more it will also allow us to get culture at an increased pace okay so that drone they don't seem to be too angry since we've been attacking them they, they start to change colors when they're really upset at you they're red then they, they have a yellow and I think they have an orange as well you know it maybe it could, might be just be three colors you know I can never remember for sure what do you want Hey, you get, you get out there. Okay, so they're pretty impressed with our energy production. Although 12 doesn't seem like a lot to me. It, you know, it's not bad. Can you wipe him out? No. So what we will do is we're going to go ahead and move here. We could attack. You know, we might as well. So we're going to have to wait and heal for a minute as we wait for our ranger unit to come down. And I want to make sure they're supported as much as possible. Okay, so somebody did not quite make the full movement. There we go. Do it up. I would like for us to get our, our culture up before we stop the video. So let's go ahead, have you step into town. You will heal up. You are going to stay put. I think I'm just going to put you on alert. You'll keep going there. So we did have some growth in Axiom. We can take a quick look what we want. I think this farm is about to be done, so we're going to go ahead and lock that in. We're good. We picked up another 80 production. So that just quick built our Cyto Nursery and we'll probably have some additional additional production moving on into the next build, next item we're going to build. So let's see, you go choose our production. Eh, maybe not too much. So I think we're going to go ahead and go with the Pharma Lab. Let's see here, our worker is done with that. We'll have him go on to this tile and start to build a farm there. Let's see, you... We need to keep you safe. I'm worried that he may attack. So we might go down this way and just do a little bit of exploring on our way back to town. Start moving you out of here. Probably start moving you as well, even though you're not healed. I'm going to trust in our strength. Okay, so explore... Uh, we can go down there and see if that resource pod is down there. It's probably not there, but we can look. Okay, so we're just going to go ahead and keep on moving forward. They're going to work as a team. Go ahead, so we're going to build a farm here. So we did pick up a virtue. So what we are going to do, although I do love the standardized architecture, which allows us to build buildings that we've already built in our capital in our other cities at a reduced rate or at, a, at an increased production um, we are actually going to go with the scavenging which would give us basically extra science when we kill aliens so let's go ahead and select that now let me double check one other thing was it a virtue no not a virtue what am I thinking? I'm thinking I want to go look at diplomatic capital before we do anything. We're going to go ahead and pick up the military trait of the science. So we're going to get extra science from killing aliens. So let's go ahead and get that. We cannot upgrade it. 
Man, of course, we could have done something else. This is, I'm not going to call say this is essential, but uh, this is what we're going to do. So when we pillage this, instruct the children not to dream of toys or sweets. Instruct them to dream of infrastructure. Yeah, the kids are going to dream of that. So anyways, we do pick up 90 science, so you can see we picked up a technology because we did that. And we also picked up 37 food in doing so, so I think that worked out pretty well. Then we can still go ahead and move. Oh, and look at that Phyraxite. We got a big Phyraxite up there. We need to get a colony up here fast, very fast. I think that would be a good idea. But I think we're going to leave that for our next video. So now we do have one more technology that, that we can go ahead and start working on. So now is when you have more options about the way that you want to go. You could go down here and go for computing, which would allow you to start having... And once, you, once you get the computing, you would go ahead and you build the spy agency, which would allow you to have three spies, and you can start doing that. You know, I think we may do that just so you can see what that is like. You know, and you might want to do something else, like robotics is an option. You know, you can go over here towards alien sciences. You know, I tried to, to stick to one of the cheaper technologies. You know, maybe you could go down and look, you know, if you really wanted to build up your culture, you can go to alien life forms. Anyways, at this point, there are a lot more options, and I think it's more of a, you know, what do I think is best for this game? You know, how do I enjoy the game? You know, it's it's not quite as important as these early technologies. You know, you can take planetary survey, especially if you're going to build an aquatic city, but we're going to take computing. And I think that's going to go ahead and end our video right here. I'd like to thank you all for watching as we take a look at civilization beyond Earth with, the, uh, I keep on wanting to call it Dark Rising Tide for some reason. Rising Tide expansion. This is just a tutorial. We're trying to figure out how to play the game, kind of how to get set up and going. and. You know, roughly win the game within 300 turns is always is always the goal. Is there are very competitive players out there who, you know, can tend to do that. And then, you know, if you're back there trying to figure stuff out, you've lost the game. And I'm not saying you need to do that to be competitive or whatever. It just uh, makes it a little bit more efficient in the game. And you can play at harder difficulties to impress your friends and all that kind of stuff. But anyways, I hope you're enjoying the series. If you have any questions, please leave a comment. If you have a like, you know, go ahead and do that. I would really appreciate it. Other than that, I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.